How do you define the commons? Could I don't use the term the commons for okay. a technical. Uh, the term commons to me means a wide diversity of non-private goods. Um, so I use the term common pool resources uh, uh, as a technical term to refer to resources where it is difficult to exclude people, not impossible, but difficult, and where whatever I take takes it away from everyone else. Now, public goods may also be commons in that broader sense. So um, uh, when we talk about the commons, then I'm thinking of both public goods and common pool resources. Public goods are like knowledge. Um, it's still difficult to exclude people, but if I use uh, your book uh, and the kinds of ideas that you have, that doesn't exclude others. Why are the commons or common pool resources important today at the beginning of the 20th century? Oh my lord! <laughs> Everyone's upset about loss of biodiversity. Well, where, where does biodiversity uh, reside? It resides in forests and pastures and lakes and all the rest. And uh, we're worried about the global commons. And uh, so it's right up there. Well, you were one of the founders and the first president of the International Association for the Study of Common Property, now International Association for the Study of the Commons. Which are, were the projects, goals, and dreams that led you and other colleagues of yours to create the IACP? Well, it was how to get a interdisciplinary, interregional, inter um, um, sector, inter sector. So those three. What we'd found uh, in the meetings of the National Research Council in the U.S. Um, was that literature written by historians wasn't re read by sociologists. And then even there, people in a particular country with a focus on a region wasn't read outside or sector. So we saw three big divisions. And that was very worrisome. We had some meetings of the, um, 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 be organized by the council, one in Annapolis in 1980. I think it was, and uh, all of a sudden we realized the immense literature that actually existed and the lacunae between. So that's why the policy literature was able to make these sweeping statements uh, without knowledge of what was going on. So the IAS uh, grew out of that, and many of us who had been on that NRC committee uh, were part of the uh, group that uh, started the uh, uh, International Association for the Study of the Commons. Um, and our hope was that we could bridge discipline, sector, and resource. And I think we have. Which are for you some of the main achievements of the ISC? Well, I do think we now have a very alive, active group of researchers who are communicating across disciplines about these important questions, and their writing has now added up and is now known across the world in a way that it wasn't before. So that I think we now are seeing that it is not just the market or the state. Which are some of the main challenges that ISC faces today? Well, if you're going to stay genuinely international, it does mean we need to meet, um, uh, alternatively, uh, in different parts of the world. That is expensive for uh, whoever isn't local. <laughs> So partly it is how we really sustain. Now fortunately with email and all sorts of Skype and other sorts of things, there's a lot we can do internationally without traveling. But you have to have some meetings where you're really face to face. And I'm very excited about the one in Hyderabad. I've never been there, so it gives me an opportunity to visit a new one. The one we had in Mexico is memorable. We all, all remember that as an excellent meeting. So I think 
they're, they're big challenges, but we're overcoming them. Which is the importance of the IEC 20 years after? And which you think should be the new themes or the themes in IEC agenda? Well, um, 20 years from now, uh, we hope that we have uh, even a firmer uh, empirical foundations for some of the theoretical developments that are evolving and we do have a lot of good theory that is now based uh, I, I'll I advertise I uh, just finished a book with uh, Amy Poteet and Marco Jansen uh, two members of IAS see and it is called working together wow. um, collective action the commons and multiple methods in practice and it will be out by Princeton this uh, spring. And what's so important about it is that we've taken the theory of collective action as it relates to commons and looked at what can we learn from individual case studies? What can we learn from meta-analysis, from large N, from experimental, from ABM, from other sorts of methods? And this is very tough theory it isn't just two or three variables that you can analyze and so then how do you accumulate what we've learned and I think we've done a very good job as of now but it's how you see sometimes variables that may be conducive under one condition aren't under another and some people say uh, you need very small groups well what Arun Agarwal has shown is that if the task you have to do uh, in needs either uh, a lot of money or a lot of people, having a small group frequently isn't sufficient. Uh, so he, he found a curvilinear relationship uh, in terms of some of the forest groups because the amount of space they had to patrol and work on and things of this sort was large, and if you were too small, you didn't have the personnel, you didn't have the people to do it. How do you ambition the ISC in, let's say, 2030? I mean, do you ambition an ISC in 2030? Sure! <laughs> um, and uh, there will be all sorts of the young people of today who have uh, uh, come up, there'll be new technology. Uh, so we don't know with some of the technological uh, chainsaws didn't look that threatening at the beginning, but they became a, such a fast way of cutting that it's not that we want to get rid of chainsaws, but we have to think through the rules and technology to cope with very, very rapid ways of uh, uh, cutting down forests or harvesting fish or any of these things. And we don't know what... Uh, one of the things that's encouraging is that some groups uh, now use cell phones to help monitor. And so there's where technology has reduced the cost of uh, some of the monitoring. So how we look at technology, information, international markets, and the polycentric organization, the ground up organization, and how they fit together, those are, are very important questions. So you think there's work for the long run to be done? I think more than just 2030. Oh, okay. <laughs>